I think they look at you like a guy who they're worried about because you don't toe the line. They should be. Exactly. You are, you're like a 90s liberal. You're like liberals back when they were more reasonable before they became leftists. And now every liberal kind of has to be a leftist. It's not it's not if you want to be on the team, you got to subscribe to the most fringe ideas that the team is promoting. And I get in trouble with that too. It's just it's such a I mean, there's so many like Joe List has talked about that recently, the comic Joe List, very funny guy. And he was talking about like he's like I'm a 90s liberal. He goes, "What? I, I didn't change." It's like everybody else kind of changed. It, got, it just yeah. got real weird, like what you're allowed to disagree with and not to disagree with. And, you know, it's, yes. it's I'm, strange. I'm always trying to make the case that liberal is a different animal than woke. Yeah. Because it is. And uh, you can be woke with all the nonsense that that now implies, um, but don't say that somehow it's an extension of liberalism. Right. Because it's most often actually an undoing of liberalism. It's so you can have your points of view and your positions on these things, but don't try to piggyback on what I've always believed. I have always believed, as liberals do, for example, in a colorblind society, that the goal is to not see race at all anywhere for any reason. Yes. That's what liberals always believed all the way through Obama, going back, Kennedy, everybody, Martin Luther King. That's not what the woke believe. They believe race is first and foremost the thing you should always see everywhere, which I find interesting because that used to be the position of the Ku Klux Klan, that we see race first and foremost everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, again, you can have that position, but don't say that's a liberal position. You're doing something very different. I think the idea behind it, I think I understand their idea. The idea is that the society is imbalanced. And so in order to address that imbalance, you're going to prop up as many minorities as possible, make as many opportunities for minorities as possible, and get it to a position where there are, like white people are a minority. And so that's not a concern anymore. And that through that somehow or another, you'll achieve equality. I think the way to achieve equality is your way. I think the colorblind way is the way to really truly achieve equality and to truly judge people just on their merits. But also recognize that if we don't address the problems in this country as far as like how disenfranchised some people are and how horrible some communities are that people grow up in and people find themselves stuck in with no recourse, no way out, no no role models, no nothing, no mm -hmm. financial opportunities. That's what our real problem is in this country, more than it is race. It's it's extreme poverty, extreme poverty and extreme crime, and that these things don't get addressed over and over and over again. And in fact, a lot of the policies that you see coming from places like San Francisco and Portland, and they just exacerbate it. You're just seeing stores close because like, okay, you can't just steal. You can't just have everybody just walk into Walmart <laughs> no. and steal. I was watching a video <laughs> where they were showing a Walgreens, and they had everything chained up, chained. Oh, yeah. Chains. Even minor little things. Yeah, little like, things. Like frozen food dinners. Yeah, yeah they had the frozen <laughs> food section chained right. off. No, I, again, that's not... Liberalism was never... Uh, shoplifting is progressive. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we, we weren't interested in legalizing uh, shoplifting, or as I, I guess we should call it justice shopping. But, you know... In Minnesota, for example, I think it was Minneapolis, after the George Floyd murder and the riots, I think there was uh, a movement to disband a lot of the police, and they did. I think a lot of the police were let go, or somehow the police force was, was a lesser force than it was. And what happened was, of course, crime went up in certain areas, and a lot of the officers who had been fired or let go or quit or w for whatever reason they weren't on the force anymore, they were hired as private security. By who? The rich people who could afford to do it. So their neighborhood stayed safe. Uh, so that wasn't exactly, I thought, a victory for liberalism. No, it's the opposite. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Austin defunded the police and then refunded it and refunded it by far more.
Mm. Then they defunded it because they just course corrected. They went, okay, this is not working. We have to do something to fix it, which makes me very happy because I was really shocked that they wanted to do that because there's a lot of crime. And where my club is on 6th Street, that's a wild place. 6th Street gets wild, and there's a lot of crime there. And there's there's a good police presence there, and we have a lot of police at the club. We hire off-duty cops uh, to work the club and a lot of security. We want to make it as safe as possible. But the, the streets in the city, like, you know, from pandemic on, it's just it's not good. You know, it's it's sketchy. And I'm glad they recognized it and did something. Well, because so many places just aren't course correcting. 